Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. We are in episode four of our series on a police car chasing a speeder. And uh, I know last time I said we were going to get to some non-constant acceleration functions, uh, but then I remembered I wanted to first show you something really cool to help visualize this chase. Um, so the, the graph is really neat. Uh, that Scilab produces in that you can see the speeder's position, you can see the police officer's position, and you can see right where they intersect, where the police officer overtakes the speeder. It'll print these out. Um, but it's also helpful to visualize this by animating it. So I've gone ahead and made an animator. Um, usually on these videos I like to show you what it is that I'm making, but Animation in Scilab is a little bit tedious, and to be honest, I just copy and paste the same code and modify it every time. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link to this file in the description, uh, and you can play around with the animator uh, all you want. Um, there's some technical stuff behind it. I don't even understand it all myself, all this underscore dot children dot mark business. Um, so I'm going to leave a link to this file in the description. Um, what this animator does is it creates two objects uh, inside of a inside of a plotting environment. One is going to be for the speeder uh, and one is going to be for the police officer. Um, I've got them coded as different colors but I don't remember what they are. Uh, but the point is that there's another loop so the loop is what's going to create the animation and you notice that the loop is referencing the position of the speeder and the position of the police officer. Um, if you just run this by itself, it's going to go really quickly, so that's why we've got the sleep command here, just to add uh, a little bit of lag time to it so that we can actually see the animation. Um, so the way you use this program is first you run the program we already have, the speed and police officer motion.sce. That of course prints out these numbers, creates these graphs, and more importantly fills the XP and XS arrays with values. And so after you run the, the calculation code, you don't want to enter a clear command or else you'll lose those, those precious arrays of data, uh, which is especially frustrating if your arrays took several hours to create. Um, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this and it's gonna create a graph uh, where one little uh, circle is going to represent a, the police officer and one's gonna represent the speeder. So let's check it out. Okay. Oh dear. Uh, size of T. Oops, I called this thing by the wrong name. Okay, so again, it is okay to make a mistake in the code because the compiler will tell you. So here, uh, I've made reference to the T array, meaning the time array, which I should, which I needed to call time. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're we're trying to get the size of the time array so that we know how much to loop over. Uh, so let's try that again. And I always forget to bring, make sure my graph is brought back up. Uh, we are going to clear this because it's got the previous stuff before. Or not clear, we're going to exit the graph. Uh, you always want to exit your graph because it will leave your previous plots on there before. Okay, so uh, third time, uh, I'm not going to claim as a charm. Um, we, 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 can, we can test that axiom scientifically if we want to. Uh, but here we go. Okay, so the green is the speeder, uh, and of course, so the green ball representing the speeder's car is moving at a constant velocity. So the green ball is going to be covering an equal amount of position for each increment of time. The red represents the police officer. So the police officer initially has a speed of zero, but the police officer is going to be increasing in speed. So at first, this gap between them is increasing, but soon it'll be decreasing just like it did on the graph of their position functions. Uh, so here their distance between each other is a little bit constant, or is a little bit constant, is more or less constant. Police officer catching up to the speeder. Uh, so we can now know that the police officer's velocity is greater than that of the, of the speeder. And they're supposed to catch up at 864 meters, and right there, 864 meters, police officer catches up with the speeder. Another successful day for local law enforcement. So, uh, please take this animator, uh, you know, have some fun with it, see if you can actually get these to look like cars instead of instead of dots. If you come up with another cool animation, uh, leave it for us in the comments section. Thanks for watching, see you next time.